Okay, um, we are in Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. <clears throat> and um, we just went through chapter 7. <clears throat> and at the end of chapter 7, um, there was this uh, portion where, um, <clears throat> well, the whole part of that is, is that, that uh, Judah... <clears throat> has found that um, Israel has joined with the enemy to attack them, to attack the king, to replace the king, to take over the country. And what we saw was that there was anxiety, all of the things that you would experience as you realize you're entering into the corridor uh, that we've talked about in First Peter. Um, and... But then the Lord sent his prophet. He sent the word of God to them uh, in that corridor. And we'll put him over here because it hadn't got to the hot pot part yet. But it is the time of adjustment, the period of adjustment. <clears throat> and so that word comes to the king and is shared with the people. And, uh, and part of that word is don't worry, just just submit and I'll take care of them and in three years they won't be around anymore <clears throat> so um, but in that process um, the uh, the king um, was asked and let me see if I can find the exact scripture here um, well this is we're, we're talking about seven chapter seven right now verse nine and the head of Ephraim, is, let's see, verse 9, the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Remaliah's son. If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. And this is the Lord talking to those who are in this corridor of sufferings. And, um, and remember, Isaiah is during the Assyrian captivity, whereas when we were in Jeremiah, it pertained to the Babylonian captivity. And it's exactly the same dealing from God. Okay, so he goes on to say, uh, the prophet says, Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, <clears throat> Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David. <clears throat> it is a small thing for you to weary men. But will you weary my God? And and uh, um, and he's saying through wearying him by not giving him uh, willing weakness and trusting him in this. And, and he wasn't up to that point. And then verse 14, Therefore the Lord Adonai himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Um, uh, let's see, bear a son. And shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us, of course. And um, so, so the sign, God wants to give a sign. I want to give you a sign. You've got this army coming down upon you and you're afraid and you're wanting me to overthrow them. And you're wanting me to use mighty God power to destroy the enemy and to show that we're the people of God. And he's saying... Um, look, I'll give you a sign, okay? This is the sign that I'm with you, okay? And he says, uh, a virgin, in this case, Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus, a really young girl and a baby. And he says, this is God with us. This is God with us. This is how you should view it. Not God showing his muscle and God using all the strength to destroy people. Uh, that's what the enemy does. And that's what the evildoer does. Uh, and, they, and they were like the evildoer. Um, when uh, uh, Remaliah, the son of Remaliah, was coming along with Ephraim, which was Israel, to destroy for no reason, they were the evildoer. But if King Ahaz had responded back in the same spirit, um, 
then he would have been an evildoer. And we've discussed these things before. But <clears throat> so, uh, so the Lord is saying, God with us is a picture of extreme weakness, willing weakness. And even his son not only came that way in earth, but gave himself at the cross in that spirit and in that way, because that's God's power and that's God's, that's God's victory ultimately. And, if, and it's saying, if you go into this corridor of suffering, if you go into here and you go into it in a certain spirit that is of the Lord and not just, you know, reacting the way that flesh reacts, then there is a release of something of God in his hands, which is in the hands of who? It's in the hands of Adonai then. And that's that's how we got into this study. Okay, so with that, and the reason, the only reason why I took us back through that part was because chapter 8 is going to bring up this name again. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, uh, let's see, we're going to read, um, we're going to start at verse 7. This is Isaiah 8, verse 7. And... Uh, and we'll read 7 and 8. Um, <clears throat> now therefore behold the Lord, and this is Adonai, behold Adonai bringeth up upon them the waters of the river. This is talking about Assyria, and it'll literally say it here in a second. The Lord is bringing up uh, bring up upon them the waters of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria and all his glory. And he shall come up over all his channels like a river overflowing its banks and go over all his banks. And he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck. And the stretching out of his wing shall fill the breath of the Lamb, O Emmanuel, which is God with us, O Emmanuel. And so um, he's saying, remember the sign last time you got attacked? That wasn't just a one-time event. Remember the sign is this, this weak baby and this weak little girl having this baby and their picture is of, of what and who they are representing and that is going to fill the whole earth eventually, okay? But right now, stay in that spirit of weakness. Don't get up here and start fighting with the evil one. Okay? All right. So, um, uh, verse 8 again, and he shall pass through, he shall overthrow and go over, and it's showing just the magnitude of Assyria. And Assyria was the world power at that time, just as Babylon was when we were dealing in Jeremiah. In Isaiah, Assyria is the world power. And they were just taking over. And he says, and they're going to come to Judah too. And this is going to happen to you. <clears throat> so, um, um, the next part is this. Last time in chapter 7, all it did was it kind of said what we've just read here uh, in chapter 8, a similar thing. All it said was um, there are evildoers that are planning and they're going to come and they're going to try to destroy you. But be with me in a certain spirit. Now he's going to emphasize that you still do that in this situation also, but there's something new that could be added here. 
And what is that? And we've alluded to that last couple of classes. And that is this guy right over here. Okay. He's the helper. I don't know. You probably can't even read that, can you? Look at that. Uh, it says helper underneath. All right. And um, and what he's he what what the the king of Judah wants to do is get this helper and see he's got the he's got a little um, halo because he's you're our helper you're gonna fix things you're gonna help us so that we can not be defeated okay so they're gonna call on this helper to come enter into the corridor and with this help defeat what God said Adonai said I'm sending this to you but we misread God okay so um, so they're on the verge of that and let's just put these two here discussing discussing it because um, they see what they're going to enter into here in this corridor so they're discussing this helper okay verse 9 <clears throat> associate yourselves see he's saying what they're saying this is what they're saying associate yourselves O ye people and you shall be broken in pieces this is God talking to them and saying if you associate yourself with uh, remember in Jeremiah it was Egypt and we'll see Egypt more when we get to Ezekiel <clears throat> they're saying let's associate with this guy and his help and his army and his abilities get him in here and they're not seeing this as a corridor of being able to fellowship with Jesus in his suffering and, and to let Christ come out of us uh, in and and defeat if you will not our enemies but defeat us defeat our soul defeat our reactions defeat, defeat our prejudices are the things that that uh, persuade us um, to defeat all of that that Christ may live in us so he says associate yourselves O ye people and you shall be broken in pieces so basically in those verses he's saying try to persuade others to your side and you're gonna be broken in pieces I'm because because why because why? Okay, I don't know if you can see all this on here, but here is Adonai, and this is Adonai's realm. This whole corridor is his realm. This is God in the person of Adonai, who it's his place to do this. And we saw in Jeremiah that God got extremely, extremely angry at Israel or Judah for calling on Egypt's help when they were in the corridor and was extremely, extremely upset with Egypt who were coming as the savior and gonna do it. And they're and gonna enter into this, if you will, I mean, it's, it's kind of like this. I mean, in this case, this is the, the helper, entering in as it were to the Holy of Holies. Now, I'm just, using that as an example to get you to see how holy this ground is to God. We go, no, it's just the devil. It's just circumstances. It's just this. It's just that. And we need to pray it away. We need to do this or that. We need no. What we need to do is understand when it is a situation that we should pray it away, we pray it away. When it is a situation that God says, you know, stand up and, and defend the sheep then you do that. But we also need to understand that there are times and situations that are, that are basically not about you, not about the enemy. It's about God and what he wants out of us. And it's so strong that he says to his people, if you call upon to assemble yourselves to get this help, you're going to be broken in pieces. Okay, so you say, "Well, brother Randy, how do I, how do I figure out which is which?" Well, you know, that's the Lord's business. That's Adonai's business. Uh, 
the whole thing is found in first Peter, but it's also throughout the Bible. So, but let's go further. Let's go further with this. Okay. That's just verse nine. Um, I'll be broken. That's not even the fullness of verse, verse nine. Um, uh, associate yourselves, O ye people, and you shall be broken in pieces. Um, and, and give ear all ye of far countries, gird yourselves and you shall be broken in pieces. So he's saying to the ones that's coming, this, this helper. Now you see to us, he's a helper because he has a halo. But if you'll notice, he's got little devil horns there. That halo is only because our flesh is crying out for help. But there's also these little devil horns because the way God sees it is that's an intruder. That's the way he saw Egypt. You're an intruder in my territory. This is not your place. But, but we, the reason why I put the halo on there is because we go, oh, no, you know, not only we think this, the helper thinks this. The helper goes, oh, I'll help. My gosh, this is horrible. Poor thing that you're having to go through this. Let me talk you through it and it'll be better. You know, uh, you're, you're intruding on holy ground, God's ground. You say, well, what's holy ground? What's God's ground? It's Adonai's ground. And when you do that, man, I mean, if you don't understand this to this point, go back to the, some of the classes we did, not just in First Peter, but go back to Jeremiah classes that I've talked about and see what's going on there. And then also stick with this because we're going to go through just these, this chapter only now. We did seven. We'll do one more. And this one's really going to spell it out. Okay? It's really going to spell it out. So, so the helper is like got his halo going and and looking as if he's really gonna you know soothe or help or use his res i'll use my resources against this evildoer uh you know the evildoer in jeremiah was babylon which we saw in the, the kids skit was babylon and god was using babylon you remember that in, in the story of Esther, uh, it was Haman, and Haman came on the scene, and God promoted him just to get a rise out of Mordecai to see what the way that you react to stuff instead of being with the Lord, at the same time violating the commandment of the Lord several different times. So in all of these and many, many, many other situations, the Lord is trying to show us his protection and care. And when I say protection, again, Adonai is not here to deliver you from Babylon, from Assyria, from Haman, from, you know, we can go on and on and on. Not when you get into that quarter of sufferings. You're supposed to be entering in and fellowshipping in the sufferings of Christ and letting Christ in that spirit live in you through the, through the process. All right. So, um, so the middle part of verse 9, <laughs> And give ear, all ye far countries, gird yourself. If you gird yourself, Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. So he's saying, if you're going to prepare to fight, gird yourself. If you're, you're the, these, this helper, he's talking to the helper now. Not the people that are in there that are calling for the helper, asking for the help, but saying to the helper, I don't see no halo. That's what the Lord's saying. I see devil horns. That's what I see. I see devil horns. And um, so he's saying, you know, if you gird yourself, if you prepare to fight, any attempt by you to get in here or Israel to fight back, um, 
by getting help or depending on their own, they're going to be broken in pieces also. Say, well, well, I don't understand God then. My whole life I was, I was trained that if anything ever happened bad, what, what you did is you just rebuked it if it was the devil. And if it was something else, you asked God to take care of it. Well, guess what? I believe there's probably a whole lot more in the Bible that I don't know about. I'll be honest with you. It's in this class dealing with Abraham that I first learned about Adonai. Never ever understood the name or hardly ever thought of it. But then by the help of some of, some of the others here, got into it and began to see that there is, that, that is his realm. Whichever of the Godhead is appointed to that. That's their realm when it comes to the sufferings of Christ because that's God's deepest desire is not just to deliver us, not just to show his power to beat somebody up or whatever. He's got all of that. He knows he can do that. He'd like for us to have his spirit and his nature and be in the image of Christ. And he desires that more than I think any of us know. He desires it, and he's so strong about it that you can see the strength of his, of, of his uh, words as he says, stop messing. You know, you, know, you may be an angel. You may, with your little halo, be an angel to, my, to, to the people that are going through the corridor and not doing it in the right spirit, but you're a devil to me, Okay. So God wants it out, wants them out. All right. So we'll have to call him back in here in a minute, possibly. Uh, so verse 10, take counsel together, meaning start talking about it to get ideas, and it shall come to naught. Okay. So here it is. These two now that are in the corridor, if they're in it together, they're talking about it. They're talking about this helper before he comes. He's up here, and they're going, well, should we do this? I mean, you know, maybe we could uh, get some help in here. Or, or you know, man, I just, I just need help. I'm just going through it, man. I just really need some help. You know, they're discussing it, and he's saying, take counsel together. If you start, to, you start talking about this thing, um, uh, and it's going to come to nothing nothing because I'm not going to allow it. This is God talking, not the devil. God saying, I'm not going to allow it. I want you to be with me in, in my son. I want you to learn his nature and you're not going to learn it in classes and, and church services and books. and everything. You're going to learn it in the fiery furnace. You know, the three Hebrew children, where's that sign? It's gone. The, the three Hebrew children, they um, they were standing up for God. They were standing up, you know, uh, the, I, we're not going to eat this food, you know. We are, we're only going to eat this kind of food because it's going to honor God. And, um, and we're, uh, you know, and so that's us. This is my testimony. This is our, the three Hebrew children. This is our testimony that we stood up for God and whatever. Well, but then there comes this time where they're thrown in the fiery furnace and there, well, okay, this is, this is saying, and it may, it may be, it may be hard to read too. I don't know. I'll read it. If you make an altar, the father will bring the fire. It is in the fiery furnace where one, like the Son of God, is walking around with them, your only concern should be to let the sweet savor of Christ crucified rise to the Father. Okay? That was hanging up uh, in the last uh, gathering that we had where we all were together, and we had a bunch of those written on the walls. But, but... Uh, I was talking about their testimony, but it's more than our testimony. It is 
when we go into the fire and we be with the Lord, that we don't get consumed by the fire. And not only, and see, the greater thing isn't that the three Hebrew children didn't get consumed by the fire. The greater thing is that Jesus showed up there. Jesus, the, the king says, well, didn't we put three people in there? What's that fourth one doing in there? The Lord begins to be seen. And that's it. That spirit, that being with him in that spirit. Okay. I get excited about this. And I always will. Because I see the Lord in these things. <clears throat> okay, so, verse 10 again. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, meaning open your mouth to justify, because it's not speaking the word of God. This He's... He's using these examples of what you better not be doing in that time. What you need, what you need is the Spirit of Christ, is the Spirit of the Lamb. And you need to exude that sweet savor to God, because this is rising up to God, and Adonai is there to help see that that happens, okay? But not to save us from it, <clears throat> okay? So, um... Uh, if you open your mouth to justify, and it shall not stand. And here's the next, next part of that verse. For God is with us. Emmanuel, the innocent, weak son. Because that's what he was in the incarnation, and that's what he was at the cross. And that's why Paul in Philippians refers to the Incarnation and the Cross, because those two places, you see weakness, you see lack of ability to, you know, and when I say lack of ability, Jesus could have called 10,000 angels. We're not talking about that. and we're, But we're seeing that weakness. So, um, take counsel together and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, meaning justify, and it shall not stand, for God is with us. Why would you do that? God is with us. And it's not just the Christian, well, God's with me, you know. Uh, in the fiery furnace, it couldn't picture Jesus in them. It had to show him with them. But Jesus is in us. But Jesus in us means nothing if Jesus can't be seen in us. It's just a doctrine then. And Jesus is seen more clearly for who he is in the fire. You get that from all the offerings, all the offerings from the beginning of time, you know, all, all the offerings that are going on. <clears throat> I mean, you see, you see Noah get out of the boat and he starts grabbing clean animals, not filthy ones and saying, you need to die in the fire. He starts grabbing clean and birds and everything that's considered clean. He's throwing them on this, the biggest bonfire you ever saw. Glory rising up to God, you know. And thank God he didn't throw everything on there. And nobody else would have anything to offer because those were the last ones. <clears throat> anyway, so, um, so God is with us in the spirit of... That, that the word that came in chapter 7, in that spirit, in that spirit. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> gosh. Uh, verse 11. <clears throat> For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say ye not a confederacy. Don't say that. Neither fear ye their fear. Don't be freaking out over their fear, nor be afraid. Okay? So he's, he's saying this. I'm, he, the Lord's saying this with a strong hand and is trying to really get this point across. But this is important to God. Now, <clears throat> Sometimes when somebody speaks with a firm hand or, you know, in this manner, we go, well, you know, they're being mean. They need to be more lamb-like or whatever. Do you know that if, if totally apart from 
people that have the Lord, if many times if they're really trying to get their point across, it's because there's something dear in that. It's not just, um, well, you know, you can believe this or not, or you can love this or not, or you can, you know, whatever. But it's like, this is really important to me. And this is, this is what I'm saying about God. He's saying, this is really important to me. And so, um, well, I think our time is, gosh. Well, we started, we didn't start at the, that's right, we had a, we had a thing. All right, so we're going to go on just a little bit more, okay? Verse 12, don't be talking about a confederacy. Um, neither fear them, nor be afraid. Verse 13, but sanctify the Lord. <clears throat> Anybody know where that comes from? Anybody? First Peter. First Peter. First Peter 3.15, but sanctify the Lord God. This says sanctify the Lord. First Peter uh, 3.15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh thee for the reason of the hope that is within you with meekness and fear. The uh, I know that we've used this verse for many different uh, things like like, uh, <clears throat> I need to know the salvation gospel so well that if somebody ever asked me, I would be able to go, it's this and this and this and this, and this is it, you know? And, the, and, and, and we would be so clear with it. And so many other things. And that's fine. Praise God. That's a good idea. But this is in the context of First Peter, and we're not, we're not there now. But the context that it's being quoted from is don't, uh, uh, don't make a confederacy. Don't get somebody else in here when you're in the trial, the fiery furnace. Don't start doing this and talking and trying to justify or figure out what's happening, what's going on and all this stuff, or figure plans on how to fight back or what you can say or do that'll slow them down or stop them or all that kind of stuff. Don't do that, but sanctify the Lord. Mm -hmm. Sanctify the Lord in you, in your hearts is the way uh, I think Peter said. Yeah, but sanctify the Lord God in your heart. In your heart, inside of you, in the trial. Okay? Um, uh, sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, himself. Just sanctify him. And uh, let him be your fear. And let him be your dread. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, well, you know, I'll stand here with my little weapons, but I want God to rise up like a horrible beast out of the sea behind me and they go oh my god what have we done what have we done why are we fighting with these people well that's not what he's talking about he's he's saying let him be your fear be your fear not their fear let him be your fear and let him be your dread meaning I am not going to go to this helper that looked like an angel because he got a halo to you. But I'm going to see this guy the way God sees him with his horns. And I'm going to say, no way, Jose. Uh-uh. No. I'm not going to. I'm going to be with the Lord. I'm going to. I'm going to. Uh. I let him be my fear. Okay, well, if he's your fear, then you're not afraid. <laughs> but you are, you reverence that, the Lord. You reverence him. You reverence his will in that corridor. You reverence his heart. You, you want to give him what he wants, which is his crucified son, slaughtered lamb, and God raises. There's... There's not a resurrection out of a, 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 an ungodly death. 
There's only a resurrection out of his, his death. And we were crucified with Christ. And now we act like it. Now in the situation, we act like it. We don't just preach it. We get to act like it. <clears throat> and then, let's see. Um, so I'll, I will read this little part. <clears throat> I wrote down what we want the word of the Lord to be in crisis. When we're there and we're not in tune with his spirit and we're open to help, outside help, then we would like the word of the Lord be what I'm going to read next. And we would consider that good counsel. If somebody said that to us, we'd say, this is good counsel. Okay. So what am I talking about? <clears throat> what we would want the word of the Lord uh, to be in our crisis, he would say, Randy, associate yourself. Get some help. This is too big for you. Or this is too much for you. Or whatever. Associate yourself with, with those. And we go, oh. That's good counsel. The Lord says, associate yourself and I'll break you in peace. <laughs> okay. Gird yourself. This is all just, I'm quoting now from, from the scriptures that we just went through. Gird yourself. Gird yourself. And yes, that's what I need to do. I'm so weak. I'm going to just gird myself. Uh, uh, let me tell you, you know, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. That's what the scripture says. Not gird yourself and be strong in that sense. Um, take counsel together. He said, don't take counsel. The, our, our prophet, Mr. Helper over here, says, take counsel together. Start talking about this. Start, start uh, uh, you know, discussing it and getting a, a clear view of how you've been mistreated you know, and come on, tell me, Mr. Helper, what, why do your ears look funny? Anyway, tell me, um, you know, what, what I should do. Well, what you need to do is, okay, I'll probably keep grabbing that guy, <clears throat> um, get the word out. And he said, don't, don't do it. Don't start talking about it. Don't start justifying don't start getting into it don't start rolling it all over your head if you if you want something to roll in your head let it be the truth as it is in Jesus let it be the truth as it is in the heart of the lamb when he went to the cross when he went to the altar um, and then the last one is join the, somebody would well let's get him back over here what else you got to say mr. helper that's so kind to me your halo is shining so bright what what else would you say? Join a confederacy. Join a confederacy. Oh, praise God. That's, that's genius. <clears throat> I bet there's a whole lot of people that have been wounded and hurt. <clears throat> and I'm going to get with them and we're all going to lick each other's wounds. I sound like a puppet voice, don't I? Anyway. So, <clears throat> all right, so we've got, uh, we're going to stop. We're, we'll probably do a little refresher next time. <clears throat> and then we're going to go through verse uh, 14 through 18. And there, <clears throat> um, there's going to be some things that are uh, pressed even more of the Lord's heart in these things, where uh, some of them will relate to um, the positive side of being with the Lord, of being um, uh, not reacting, but acting based on His nature acting based on his um, gentleness, if you will, uh, his, his self-giving. Um, so let's pray. 
Father, we just love you, and we do love you, and we do love the way you and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are in that you don't justify yourself. You don't, you don't have to declare yourself. It doesn't have to be about one of you individually. That you glorify one another, you bless one another, you, you cover, as it were, one another. You don't have to look for help. You are one in spirit. One in spirit. And we want to be one in spirit with you. To bear your image. To bear your reproach. To bear your habitation. To bear being put outside the camp. To find or be with you in spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.